to That's all right. accommodate us because we're all down for, as you know, for a week of purposes. Our day off today, we decided we'd all not had enough of pottery, so we wanted a bit more. Well, I did more. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it gets too, doesn't it? At least I can still throw it. <laughs> Of us that struggle in that department, <laughs> no. me at the head of the list. Do you lose a tiny bit of skill if you haven't done it for a while? I notice. You have a warm up exercise then? Do you stretch? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Just go for it. <laughs> <laughs> When you see people pushing against walls and doing all sorts of strange things, and I think, God, if I did that, I can't kill myself, you know, I can't do that. Yeah. Go straight into a game of badminton. No warm up, no warm down, just do it. Yeah. Well, I was watching these golf professionals in the Olympics, and they, they warm up for an hour beforehand. You'd think, God, I'd be knackered. Absolutely. <laughs> What about that 10,000 K uh, swim yesterday? Did yeah. anybody see that? No. And the an English guy was disqualified at the end. Oh, wow. no. I don't know. I don't probably I jumped never into the quickly at the, the start or something. It came to fifth or something. Oh. All right, this is for the, this particular technique of uh, putting powder clay on and then stretching. Which I, I actually was at uh, teach just many, many years ago, 40 years ago or something. I was teaching at Medway. I was doing blocks of a week or a few days at Medway College. Oh, that's still going, probably not, because most colleges are closed. Mm. But I noticed there was a girl up on the table picking up a lump of clay like that, and she put some white clay on the table and she was throwing the clay down to get those stretch marks. That was all the rage at the time. Sebastian Blackie and people like that were all doing it at Farnham. Mm -hmm. And uh, when she picked it up, I noticed on the back this white clay, which, which, which she, when they threw it down again, it all cracked up. Oh, I wonder if I can do that on the wheel. Mm. So me and a guy called Gary Standage, who was a potter you may probably haven't heard of, but he got one of the worst cases of ME. ME, is it, where you get yes. yeah, in, in the country? In the country. Mm -hmm. He was in a wheelchair for two years, staring at the floor type of thing. He's now potting again, but he has to be very careful with his energy levels. But he and I set up, tried experiments how to do this. You know. Anyway, we, we came up with this eventually. Although, unbeknown to me, there was a Korean already doing it in Manchester. Right. And then, instead of it being a solid week, um, he, this year he, he's decided to do a sort of Wednesday off. Um, and uh, a drying day. As a drying day. And yeah, he told me on the phone that that was his intention. And then, and then tomorrow's glazing. Hmm. Friday is get the kiln going. So we started the Sunday instead of the Monday. That's, that's right. right. So we can't oh, get, get, so we, we get, mix, get, get, get a taste of the whole, whole, whole sort of <laughs> Well, yes. we've had such rubbish weather for so many years that drying has been really stressful. Trying to get there. things dry yeah. and mm -hmm. yeah. 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 on Thursday yeah. when we're all still throwing stuff on Wednesday Trying night. To make, <laughs> or, or make a decent pot. You know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anyway, so you, you could do what you like on the outside. I've just done a very simple. Yeah. Yeah. And then you wet the outside. I love the way you just, you're doing this as part of the process. If, I, if I'd made the pot that you made, that would have done me quite sufficiently. <laughs> now, if you put the marks on, that would have done me, but you're still going. I'm yeah. still going, yeah. Could you hand me that towel, that blue and white one? Sorry. It's blue and white, sorry. yeah. It's stainless. Yeah. One thing I've forgotten is a town. Brilliant, thanks. Mm, gorgeous, isn't it? Yeah, she's a cross greyhound and I think Doberman. Yeah, she's, she's not Doberman, as. But I'm not sure. Pointy is a yeah, greyhound. She's quite a bullish sort of mm. runner. She, she'd do well in races, I reckon. Yes, yeah, she, she, she just took off like, from the oh, did she? gate. Yes, yeah, she just sort of leapt. 
This is just china clay because I, I have to sort of mix them and sieve them and things for china clay and ball clay. I haven't experimented much with the mix. I have tried putting a little bit of felspar in to get it to stick better. Mm -hmm. uh, but it tends to fall off. But what was the ratio? Just half and half. Half and half. Ball clay and china clay. Mm. I'm sure there are, you know, you could add a little bit of oak oil. This is not quite as smooth, it's just all clean. The thing is not to touch the pot, keep your hand away, you know, about mm -hmm. an eighth of an inch from the pot. You take, you take plenty of clay in your hand and just sort of... I was kind of expecting you to throw it at the pot. <laughs> I wonder where, where no, that sheet was. <laughs> so it's uh, interesting to see what I do with that. <laughs> and the reason you sieve it is because it tends to have lumps in it. You don't want lumps. Okay. This is one of the few things that takes ages per pot, which is mm. not really in a potter's temperament, but if the, well not in mine, you know, I like the flow of throwing, it takes a while, but the results are sort of worth it, I usually have a couple of days at it. Are you sort of waiting for it to be absorbed? Is yeah, that... I, I beat, beat it in to take the excess off, and, it, and, it's, and if you use uh, pure water, you get smaller cracks than if you use slip. Ah. I've noticed. Mm -hmm. What smaller cracks in the break up. dry? Yeah, the right. break up um, mm. okay. on the surface. China clay, ball clay doesn't matter if it goes into the general mix. careful because the if we make vertical lines you get splitting if you go too deep which I suspect I've done the cake is reminiscent of the sodium silicate stuff yeah I think the sodium silicate cracking is it's, it's different in character. It doesn't involve any clay, does it? No. Just trying to extend this as far as I can without it splitting. It won't be long. Try this te technique with other materials then. Uh, you, you, you said you experimented with. Uh, no, I haven't. Clay, no, but I mean that's because it's china clay. It's flaky. It's a bit flakier than it would be with the mix. Uh, but I haven't tried anything else. Really. It's very effective. Yeah. It, and it stays quite stable like that. Well, this is a good question. <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah. You can't touch this now uh -huh. until it's got glaze on it.
You can touch the top and the bottom, but you can't touch this because it'll just fall off. So How do you, you can just that? brush it with your sleeve. Does it not come off in the glaze then? It doesn't come off in the biscuit. And once you've dipped it in the glaze, it holds it together, provided the glaze has no clay in it. Alright. Oh, if the clay's got yeah. clay in it, it'll pull it off. Wouldn't take that with the door. Yeah, so, probably have 10% clay, but I wouldn't go more than that. So you lift it very carefully, and what, you then biscuit fire it yeah, without touching? Yeah, just let it dry, biscuit it. I might, when it's a bit biscuited, I might pour a, a thin layer of iron on, on it and then glaze it. Uh, but, but up until it's been glazed, you can't. I sorry, let me start again. Yeah. After it's been biscuited, you still can't touch it. Not the outside. No. Right. It's you just like a powder. It on it, but you can't touch it. It's just like a powder. It would just yeah, yeah. rub it just away. Off. Okay. I've had birds come in here and land on them and fluff it. When you say put iron over it, in what form? Well, I've got this lovely iron that I get out of a cave in a stream in Cumbria, which is. Uh, rotting ironstone cave, and it's you know that orangey colour you sometimes mm. see in very uh, marshy ground. Yeah, yeah that yes. bright, that. rather but sour. It's, pure. it's in a powder form. Well, I get it with full of leaves and twigs and things out of the you know, All right. and then I mm. sieve it. I can show you that. Is that from one of the, it's lovely the mines? Stones. Is that from one of the mines? No, no, no. It's just a, a cave on the side of a river, and it's just Which dripping. Whereabouts? Where I, I live in Cumbria. So. Uh, Parson Bridge near uh, uh, near oh. um, Wheaton. Oh, yes, that's up the far up side north. of the county for me. Yeah. Where were you? In the south, Alveston. Oh yeah, because uh, yeah, I used to live in near Wheaton. Up there. So usually you throw it on the back, would you? I would normally throw it on the back. <laughs> 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 Yeah, you can do that. Yeah. I've done that. Yeah, 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 I can do that. But I haven't played around much with the mix, apart from Johnny Clay and Ball Curry. Um, seems to be quite good, but I, I've often thought they'd be lovely in salt, you know, because it's got high Chinese yeah. clay, and that would be quite orangey, wouldn't it? So you could maybe but have an ash glaze down to here or something, which would run into mm -hmm. a nice orange cracked up thing, I don't know. I don't have a salt gun. But uh, when I was at uh, Rufford about, oh, about 20 years ago, they asked me to demonstrate, and I asked for a, for a kick, you know, like this, a momentum wheel, and they provided this dreadful wheel. It was awful. I mean, the seat moved back and forth. I couldn't put my feet anywhere, and it just, oh, it was dreadful. Anyway, uh, I was, because this is always a good demonstration thing, and I did this, and... Um, I was saying, you know, somebody ought to take this a bit further, you know, I'm sure it could be used really nicely in all sorts of, so maybe even bracket, I don't know. Mm. Um, and as I was saying it, I think, oh, why don't I do it? Why don't I do more? You know, I'd only done about mm -hmm. four, and one had been picked up by the V&A, and it's, it's, you know, and they say, Mike Don mm. makes scraggly pots or something, you know, <laughs> one piece they've got, <laughs> which is mm. not representative particularly, but, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, so I, when I was there, I thought, okay, so from that point on, I started doing a lot more. And, uh, I say a lot more, I probably made 20 maximum in a fire.